It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. That famous quote from Dickens could also fairly describe Crockett in the late 1930s. The small blue-collar town hugged the hilly shores of the Carquina Straits. The Great Depression had caused an upheaval in the world's economic and social structure. Even tiny Contra Costa County was not immune to the vast changes and conflicts sweeping the United States. Crockett's economic lifeline was the CNH sugar refinery. Pay cuts and reduced working hours hit the workers of CNH hard. Nevertheless, these stern measures kept most workers employed and the Crockett population more prosperous than many communities around the nation. But bad times and more liberal labor laws led the CNH employees to organize for improved rights and benefits. The union struck CNH sugar in 1935 and 1937, but then in 1938, a particularly bitter strike tore apart the close-knit Crockett community. The CNH sugar refinery operated under an AFL closed shop agreement. The Sugar Workers Union had joined the CIO. On March 11, 1938, the CIO Sugar Workers Union set up picket lines when their leaders were suspended under the terms of the closed shop AFL contract. The warehouse union honored the picket line. The sugar refinery shut down and economic desperation began to infect the small Crockett community. Economic desperation led to 600 Crockett women to pass a resolution in the Crockett Community Auditorium asking CNH to reopen the refinery as requested by the AFL. CNH management refused. On the 27th day of the strike, fed up, 400 AFL union members marched down Winslow Avenue chanting, let's go get them. Blood flowed as they attacked the CIO picket line. Warehousemen and sugar union workers were severely beaten. The CIO men retreated to the Longshoremen Union Hall on Loring Avenue. Armed with clubs, they fought back. Deputy sheriffs and highway patrol officers charged, firing volley after volley of tear gas. Lauren Avenue was filled with clouds of choking fumes. Men were beaten with clubs and fists. Lauren Avenue became slippy with blood. Fighting raged for over 40 minutes. Men suffered stab wounds from rioters wielding ice picks. An AFL man was run over by a car. Meanwhile, the AFL men had driven the CIO strikers from the CNH refinery. Law officers sealed off Crockett to prevent Union reinforcements. Railroad trains were searched and autos were searched for invaders and weapons. The sudden violence shocked many into reconsidering their actions. Cooler heads prevailed and a shaky surface calm gradually returned to the little Contra Costa community. The CNH refinery soon opened. Two weeks later, the warehousemen voted to return to work. Lost paychecks and personal hatreds were some of the fruits of the bitter 41-day strike. During World War II, outsiders and women replaced most of the old employees. The CIO and the AFL later merged. After World War II, the closed shop was finally outlawed nationally. Life gradually returned to normal. Perhaps Crockett and the world had forgotten the bitter battle. However, even now, there still remain some who have not forgotten or forgiven the tragic circumstances surrounding the Great Sugar War of 1938. The strike had pitted father against son, brother against brother. It was for the nation and for Crockett a moment in history. <laughs>